my expert skills at explaining things to people, I think that's going to be the winning combination to where he's going to turn around and go back to school the next day and tell all those kids how much of an idiot they are <laughs> for having those cell phones in their hand. That's Well, at least that's my plan. I don't know how successful I'll be. But enough of that. Get back to unfriended. What is the uh, what is the the message here, right? What is the message here, or indeed is there a message? Maybe this is just mindless entertainment, possibly. But then the question sits there: Well, if it's mindless entertainment, why are they so poignantly pointing at what we're doing right now? Are they trying to underscore the unhealth aspect? Are they trying to underscore or, or maybe it's just they're going with the familiarization aspect. In other words, they're familiar with it, so they'll want to go. You know, and that's that's kind of an interesting thought, too, because with movies, movies have always been that that fantasy getaway. Right. Traditionally, you know, uh, I mean, well, let's see, I, I'm, I'm a barber. I, I cut hair for a living. And Jurassic Park comes out, and they're extracting DNA from from mosquitoes and making dinosaurs. Wow. You know, I don't know how to do that. I I can't relate to being a geneticist, but that movie looks cool. I want to go see that. And why? What what, what is drawing that barber to go see Jurassic Park? Well, it's the excitement, the exhilaration. We're we're being chased by dinosaurs. Uh, Cutting hair isn't going to help you. Run. You know, it's that excitement, that exhilaration, and you get immersed in that, and it's not your daily life. So you're all excited. You're like, yeah, this is exciting. Indiana Jones, exciting. Oh, yes, this is kick-ass. But now they're coming out with a movie that from start to finish is a desktop computer screen, and you're watching it, and it's this Skype conversation between six people. And through the movie, they subsequently all, one by one, get killed in horrible ways that you see on Skype. Okay, um, well, I, I'm the same barber, I cut hair for a living, and this movie comes out, and I'm like, well, um, yeah, I've, I've got Facebook up in, in the barber shop, and I'm on it all day, and I have a cell phone, and I've done group Skype chats, and what's going to draw him to that movie? Is it the young kids dying? I don't know. This is this is why I want to hear from you. The number is 914-873-1692. Give us a call if you're a horror movie buff especially. Maybe you can shed some light on this, but I don't get it. I, I'm just, what? Uh, Devil on in the uh, Spreaker.com chat room says, because entertainment is always interconnected with some reality. and And that's true. And see, that's at the start of the show when I told you about my filmmaking experience and how I've always been drawn more to realism than to the blown up, unbelievable stuff. That you, you still have that situation where, you know, if, if those characters you can relate to more directly makes the, the show more meaningful. But in this case, this is like it's like a slasher film. And then how, you know, if you're a horror movie buff. Let me know how that draws you in. You know, what 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 sits there and makes you go, oh, yeah, I've got to so see that. Let me know. Let me know. Give us a call. We'll be back in uh, two minutes after this quick commercial break. And you are listening to Crash Talk with Christopher John Taylor, a.k.a. Crash Jesus, on HTLA Radio 1, New York. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stoville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonnyville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow. That's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellowknife, Whitehorse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been 
been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies bare, man. I breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. Check it out. Ottawa, Wawa, Mattawa, Chippewa, Moose Jaw, Oshawa. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions. Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed ensuring maximum flavor and freshness. Then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it. Now what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. When, when we, we arrived, arrived at, at our hotel, hotel in New York, York the, the porter, porter was, was so incredibly careful, careless with, with our bags. bags. And, and the, the room they gave us, it was, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the, but best the worst part, part was the, the shower. shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towels. Shower curtain to find that whole vacation, whole vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials! You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do! Power! Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. Well, welcome back to the big program. That's right. Crash Talk here Tuesday night, Tuesday, April 14th, 2015. 60 degrees right now in Central Park and cloudy. Uh, and that's just fine by me. HGLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. Crash Talk, of course, tonight is brought to you by Tim Hortons, New York City. Now with eight fine locations in that city to serve all your coffee and baked goods needs. Check them out, Tim Hortons. They're always fresh. Yeah. Well, tonight, the episode is Unfriended, and we are talking about that new film that's coming out this Friday to theaters everywhere. 
And, uh, well, what, 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 what am I on about? What am I on about? Yeah, really? Who cares? It's just a movie. <laughs> well, it's a new controversial movie that wants to show audiences the real horrors of having an online persona, whether they hit the like button or not. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been discussing tonight through our segments that, uh, well, I don't know. It's it's something that really bears some kind of interesting reaction from a lot of people. And uh, for me, of course, it, it's kind of... I, I just don't know where they're going with it or what they're, they're trying to accomplish. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. You know, that could be possible too. It's, after all, just a bloody movie, right? Well, it's a movie that's glorifying Facebook and Twitter and social media as a whole. And indeed, our lives today in 2015. And indeed, death. Because, <laughs> of course, it is a horror movie. And everybody's dying. Yeah. Actually, to be more specific, the story uh, is while video chatting one night, six high school students uh, receive a Skype message from a classmate who killed herself on social media exactly one year ago. At first, they think it's a prank, but when the girl starts revealing the friend's darkest secrets, they realize they're dealing with something out of this world, something that wants them dead. Told entirely from a young girl's computer desktop. Yeah, Cybernatural redefines found footage for a new generation of teens. And of course, the found footage generation of movies, uh, you'll remember back to 1999 and the Blair Witch Project. Yeah, that was a story where a bunch of filmmakers went missing and ultimately were murdered and, and their... their uh, their film, of course, was uh, found by authorities during the search. And, and these guys did, i got to say, a masterful job of marketing that film. Because, of course, what they do? Their commercials weren't your usual movie commercials. Uh, they were more of a, a news documentarian style, indicating that these uh, people did actually go missing in the hills of Pennsylvania or somewhere, and et cetera, et cetera, and... and uh, you know, the authorities found their film canisters and the camera and a couple of bits and pieces of bloody material from them, and that was it. And then, of course, on uh, opening day, the entire planet tried to cram into those movie theaters to find out what happened to those kids. You know, that kind of stuff works, because why? Well, you relate to it. You're like, oh, my God, those kids, I have kids. Oh, Jesus, I hope nothing happened. I hope nothing went wrong. And, of course... What did they allude to with all of their media and hype that this wasn't a, a fictional story, this was real, it really happened, and oh my God, we've got the film and we're going to release it. That was the guise of the Blair Witch Project, and it certainly did well for them in the box office, didn't it? Yes, it did. And then, of course, what happened 10 years later? Well, that was paranormal activity, wasn't it? Yes, where it's that found footage. Yes, the people are all dead, but we found the footage. Well, <clears throat> this is a little bit different, a little bit more up-to-date and modern, as it all takes place on one computer screen. And I swear, if I find out they spent any more than about $1 million budget on this, I'm, I'm going to go and shoot them or something. No, wait. No, I'll, I'll have to kill them on social media. That's it. Right, kids? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, I gotta use them sometime. I'm paying them twenty bucks. There you go. <laughs> oh well, <clears throat> and, and of course tonight we've also been talking about uh, unfriended and the concept of how it relates you know, to modern life in North America, in which you know we're all kind of faced into our cell phones and laptops and computers and we're always on our computers and laptops and faces and yeah and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all that stuff and I think I think now more that I and I think about it and I look back on that Blair Witch deal eh, this is probably some new marketing ploy that they've come up with to, to sell tickets sure 
and uh, of course the craze should do them quite well if if YouTube videos of people killing themselves is.